Okay, so um, this is a really weird milk run. I'm in my friend, uh, my friend's Yaris GR. Uh, it's brand spanking new, kinda. It's done 1,281 miles. It's got a proper handbrake, uh, one of those fancy ones that disconnects the engine when you pull it. Um, so proper rally stuff. Um, I just, the, the, the new car smell is overpowering. Uh, I've literally just got in. I don't know where anything is. Um, and the air conditioning is on. It's really hot outside, but he's kindly lent it to me to go for a milk run. I don't want to change too many things, so I'm looking a little bit in the mirrors and stuff. He's uh, I'm a little bit taller than him. Um, <clears throat> but I don't really know much about the Toyota Yaris GR, apart from what I've read. It's like the alternative review because um, because I'm not going to be hooning around a track I'm just going to drive it around some country lanes go and get the milk and then go and hand it back um, I don't know how much you guys probably know more about this car than I do um, it's a 1.6 3 cylinder turbocharged engine uh, it's like 261 brake horsepower something like that and 4 wheel drive and does 0 to 60 in like 5.2 seconds that's about as far as the technical my knowledge of it goes um, but I'm just gonna look at what it's like to drive now I've literally just pulled off and done about 10 meters uh, and I'm now stuck in traffic um, so uh, it feels pretty much like a like a Yaris at the moment um, it doesn't sound all that loud or different uh, clutch is easy to use the it feels kind of big inside because you're sat so far back. Uh, it sounds a bit sporty. I'm not really used to the clutch yet. Um, wow, well, it's wider than I, I, I thought. Um, and it's um, it, it does do that thing that the, uh, our Golf R does as well when you put it into race mode. Race mode. It doesn't do clicking on the handbrake, which is a bit uh, weird. But it um, it does that thing where the sound comes, the uh, exhaust note comes through the speakers. It's slightly fake because it's a small turbocharged engine. Um, it's weird because I can't get it. The, the gear stick feels really nice and mechanical, um, and the steering wheel is really nice, soft leather. It's um, it's got a really nice feel to it. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of people say it's a Yaris, and if you're not going on uh, a track why would you have it because around about the uh, villages and towns and things like that it feels very much like a normal Yaris um, I don't think it does I've never been in a normal Yaris so I, I'm not one to judge but it kind of feels a bit like um, any other car um, the, the thing it's got obviously going for it is it's got um, all right, okay, it's, it's blipping the throttle because uh, that's turned on IMT or something like that. Um, and you can feel that there's quite a lot of um, give, quite a lot of uh, travel in the accelerator. So I'm in third gear, I'm doing 40 miles an hour and it, it kind of feels like it's going quite slowly. But if I put my foot down at this speed, yeah, it comes in a bit late. There's a little bit of lag, um, which, I mean, is the, would there be turbo lag? I don't know. Because um, if you're driving at low speeds and every now and again you want to put your foot down just to feel that performance, I don't know. Would that... Let's have a, let's have a try again when I get through here. Right in second. So this, right now, you wouldn't think it was anything special and it just kind of goes fine um, and it does do that little like noise and vibration at the back where you know it's it's something a bit more than your average car and I'm in fourth doing 50 yeah it it delivers it's, it's almost like a vibration I'd say you feel it through the steering wheel and it's a brand new car, 
so and it's driving the way it's supposed to drive it doesn't help that I'm on a really gorgeous winding country lane with a Vauxhall van in front of me uh, so I'm gonna try and drop back but he's kind of slowing down as well I think he knows that I want to put my foot down a bit um, but right now I haven't gone above 50 and it doesn't feel any different from any other small car um, you kind of know you, the noise, the slight better rumble that you think, okay, there's there's more to this. Uh, but if I, there's no cars behind me, if I slow down to 30 and I'll put it into second, and then I put my foot down, it, it blipped the throttle again. Now, that was really quite good. The acceleration was really good. It doesn't feel as, because the thing is, Anytime you drive a car and you're kind of assessing it, thinking about it, is it good, do I like it, why does it drive this way, why does it drive that way, you're anchored by the last car you drove. <clears throat> so the last car I drove was my wife's Golf R. Now that does 0 to 16 something like, so the DSG Mark 7.5, so it does 0 to 16 something like 4.6 seconds. So it's a little bit faster than this, but it's bigger, it's automatic, and um, it, it feels like the it's more on tap the power I think this is more where you're operating at much higher revs that it gives you all of that performance and all of that enjoyment especially when you're working the gears you can hold it in the gear longer so down at low speeds it's fine if I put my foot down at 30 miles an hour in fourth it kind of moves it's really difficult because this um, van is so close in front but it feels nice I mean it's, it's rock solid um, the suspension's pretty good it rides the bumps really well obviously better than my 996 um, maybe because that's got quite tired suspension and it kind of clangs over the, some of the bumps but if I slow down to 30 and I'm cruising along and then suddenly it goes to 50 miles an hour and I put my foot down, yeah, nothing happens. And then you get to 45 and then it all kicks in and everything starts happening. Um, and even then, it's not, it's not brutal, it's quite smooth. I suspect if I was in third, let's try that. So the revs are a bit higher, it's at 3,000, I suspect. It all kicks off after 3,000, so I slow down a bit. Yeah, it still doesn't feel really I mean it makes it makes all the right noises and it really grips uh, but I guess it's got brand new tires as well um, so initially if you were to go I've heard, I've heard nothing but really amazing things about this car and I want it for all of those reasons but I'm actually not gonna go on a track I'm not gonna go on a rally stage I'm just gonna drive around the roads and I live in the country so I'll go on the country lanes and hopefully I'll enjoy it but if you're just pootling about, it's kind of uh, it's kind of looks like a normal car. So, I mean, I haven't got to the point where I'm able to. So if I go like this, I'm just waiting for the throttle to get blipped, but I can't really accelerate because of the van that just turned onto this road as I was coming onto it does feel like it wants to go but the throttle response isn't instant it's almost like it's it does a little think about it and then kicks in and then the revs just keep climbing it um, the rev counter says it'll go up to 8,000 um, so I'm not initially bowled over by it but I need to find a slightly more open country lane with um, better, a uh, higher speed limit, which is here actually. So, okay, that's better. So, if you're in second gear, it feels like it's making quite a lot of noise, but at the slightly lower revs, under 4,000, it doesn't quite just instantly go. It has to be over 4,000 where the 
turbo is already up to the right speed. That's how I, that's the impression I get. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I thought I'd give it a go and I'm, I'm really enjoying driving it. Um, and it feels sporty being in here, the look of it, the feel of it, the suspension, the driving position, the steering wheel, the way the clock's laid out, um, the, the gear change. Um, it's really, I, I think the only way I can describe it is it's really mechanical. Um, but it, it's the way it moves is very definite. There's nothing woolly about it. I know it's brand new, but there's something more than that. Um, so from that point of view, it is actually brilliant. And if you're, if you really think about every little thing that you're doing, you know, doing 40 miles an hour, and I'm behind the Lola driver now, um, but doing 40 miles an hour and then uh, and then sixth. It's, if you're thinking about what you're doing, just that feel of moving it between the gears, the way the clutch is, that little blip on the um, accelerator that it does for you when, you when your foot's off the accelerator, is um, it's really nice. But is that going to, you know, if you're driving it every day for a year, is that going to be just as pleasurable in a year's time when you're not really able to exploit the performance? And there's also that thing, a whole load of people have bought it because it's um, there's a really long waiting list, the reviews have been brilliant, and uh, it, there's a year's waiting list. So if you bought it, you could use it for a few months and you could sell it, or a few weeks, put hardly any miles on it and sell it for the same, if not more money. I know a lot of people have done that, which is fair enough because how often do you get to have a car with this performance, buy it brand new, and then drive it, enjoy it, and then just sell it on without losing any money. And you'd think, okay, that's something. Oh my God, vans, vans just pulled out in front of me. What time is it? So it's Thursday today and it's 20 to five. So I suspect traffic's just building up. Oh, you wouldn't think there was a pandemic on and there was a, everyone was locked down, but you can feel it, it does that little, it was almost like a dump valve noise when you're off the accelerator. Um, and once you're in the higher revs, for over three and a half thousand, four thousand, it is responsive and you can you can feel it wants to go. But when you're just poodling about, it just feels like any other car. And I think that's, that's probably a positive because it's much like the Mark 7 Golf GTI which is, you can poodle about it in it all day and it's great, but when you really want to go for it, it's brilliant. Uh, so it kind of feels like that, so it's not a negative. Um, you know, you don't feel like you're always trying to tame some crazy high performance car while you're pottering about in the village or in a city or in a town. Um, it's kind of quite docile, it's nice. But if, um, but I haven't had the opportunity. You've literally seen all the driving I've done in it. So I'm gonna go this way. And guess what, there's another van there. It's a little bit further away, so I'm on 4,000 revs in second at 35. Okay, so I think it's a... So I get, I kind of get it. I get it now. Uh, I get it now. Like you know, I've driven it for nine minutes. Um, it's it's purely a fun factor car, but it's made for uh, you know it's a rally car. It's not. I mean, I'm used to driving uh, my wife's Golf or my 911, and they have great performance. It's quite brutal, noisy, and and that's what you get with this. And you might think, well, it actually doesn't feel as noisy and as brutal as that, but it's got a whole load of other stuff going on which is the, you know, the, the way that it grips the road, the four-wheel drive, the, the way that it delivers the power, the noise, all of that. So, I mean, is it right that everyone's making a fuss about it? I don't know. I'd, I'd need to drive it a bit more. Uh, I'd need to drive it a bit more when there's not so much flipping traffic around. And just going round a roundabout, it does feel like you could take that really fast. Not that you would, because it's dangerous. Um, but in the in, in second, first and second, when you put your foot down, 
it, it seems to come alive once the you go above 4,000 RPM. Um, and the seating position is good. I'm sat quite high. I would probably lower the seat normally. I don't want to make too many adjustments because it's my mate's car. Um, but I need to just get to a clear road, so that side of the road is quite clear. So I'm probably going to turn around at the roundabout and hoping that there's not another van. There seem to be a lot of vans out tonight. I'm, uh, I'm looking and there's like 15 cars I can see up ahead and probably eight of them are vans, like big vans, transits kind of thing. So at the moment, so I'm in fourth, I'm doing 50, if I put my foot down, and I guess with the miles going up, it will get better and better. And I don't want to rev it too far because is that broken in? I don't know. So I don't want to go crazy on the revs. But I do quite like it. I quite like it in the way that... So in, in the 911, and to a certain extent in, in my wife's Golf R, there's, you know all the powers there. It's kind of, as she says, the car's kind of egging you on. So you're constantly, you're constantly going a little bit fast or you're accelerating quite hard as you come onto a road even though there's no need, up to the speed limit. Whereas this one, you could just poodle around and not make use of the power. Um, but it is there, even, so even when you know, the, the turbo hasn't totally kicked in, it does, it does kind of hunker down and go, well actually it goes slightly up from the front because the power must be delivered a little bit more to the back wheels. Um, so it does want to get up and go, but I'm not on a clear enough road to do that. There's a massive lorry going the other way now. Um, and I did say to my friend, I'd bring it back in 10 minutes and I've been gone 15 already. Um, but it, it feels kind of, it's got that feeling of that you want to throw it around. Um, and, my friend wants to take it on like a pretty much a rally stage. Um, yeah, I'm not. See, I'm not a track person. I wouldn't do any of that. And he changes his car quite often, so he might keep it for a couple of years and then uh, sell it. And I suspect he won't lose too much money through depreciation. But let's have a look and see. Don't pull out. Ah, but got oh, right. Okay, a guy in an SUV pulled out. So we're going to go all the way around and try and get out before this bus, before this car. No, another guy in an SUV has pulled out. Oh, brilliant. Honestly, you just can't get, he's right in front of me, he's probably 10 meters, driving really slowly in a Volvo XC90. And it's just shit. You just can't get um, a little bit of clear. I'm, I'm talking like 200 meters. You can't get 200 clear meters. So you can just put your foot down a little bit. Um, okay. I'm going to have to think of something now. Because this is my only opportunity. I don't want to keep asking him. Um, it's his pride and joy. But I'm not, tra like I was saying, I'm not a track person. I wouldn't take it. Uh, rallying or anything like that, but I, I feel like it could be incredible fun doing that if you knew what you were doing because I don't uh, Even if I did do it, I wouldn't know what I was doing So I'm, I'm now doing the speed limit here is 50 and I'm doing 35 and that XC90 isn't moving away So I'm in fourth. I've gone up to 50 now So let's see if I put my foot down. Oh a Ferrari 308 just went past. Right, here we go. Yeah, so at that speed, it has to have a little think. So it's not brutal acceleration like there would be in my 911 where everything's instant because it's not turbo powered. But even in the Golf R, it's more instant because if you put it in sport mode and it's a DSG, it puts it into the right gear. So if I was doing 50, I should probably be in third. Let's try that. And, and then it blips the throttle again. So, if I'm in third, doing 40, and I put my foot down. Yeah, it's not instant. Yeah, it doesn't come instantly. It's, it's a strange one, but I suspect if I'm going through the gears, 
it's amazing and you're keeping the revs really high uh, but I, I just suspect all of those things I don't know because because there's no road space to do anything I'm gonna have to head back it feels it feels nice it's a great space to be in I like that it's all minimalist everything's manual it's got a proper handbrake even though it doesn't do the clicking I would have liked to to have clicked um, it drives very sort of it's yeah it's very easy to drive Hang on. Oh, there's so many people driving okay let's have a look oh, please don't turn into me madam Now I'm behind a Honda Jazz, and the Honda Jazz has let out another van in front. How can this be? So I would keep doing that. I would keep doing that accelerate acceleration on country lanes where the speed limit is 50. Um, but I can't. I literally can't do anything. I like. But like I was saying, I like the minimalist uh, layout of everything. It's got proper knobs and buttons for the climate control and um, the heating um, it's got volume control it's got a twisty knob rather than touch screen it's got a hell of a lot of buttons on the uh, steering wheel which um, I don't like because even on the golf that we've had for nearly four years I don't know what they do um, I want to do one more attempt go round this way and hopefully get a little blast down this country lane and then come back because I'll have been gone way too long when I said I'd be gone 20 minutes right second gear 4,000 yeah yep it feels pretty good and I like it because it's once you've got the revs high it's brilliant it just you, you should be able to just go through the gears and oh and it tells you when you're speeding uh, I, uh, the speed limit and uh, it, the little circular thing went red and it's gone white again because I've dropped below the speed limit so all of those things I love those things it feels and and goes just like a proper old-school hot hatch but those hot hatches old school hot hatches were quite they, they required quite a bit of input when you were just pottering about town um, and they probably weren't quite as slick whereas this it's really easy to drive at low speeds and it, you know it could just be a, a normal well it couldn't be a normal Yaris it's just everything that to touch feels really nice the gear stick the handbrake the steering wheel even the, the door cards there's the Alcantara uh, it, it just everything feels nice to touch it's all really um, just the nature of it. it it feels really nice it feels like it's a sporty car uh, you wouldn't think it that you were in a Toyota if it wasn't for the big T uh, in the middle of the steering wheel and just just when I'm driving it I every now and again just poke the throttle and just to make it make me push me back in the seat um, I like it would I buy it for my personal preference I wouldn't because um, well I wouldn't buy it because it's not practical for the way I live and I have small children actually they would fit in the back the back seats are really small uh, they look kind of the same as my 996 where people with no legs would find them very useful my daughter is six and doesn't fit in the back of the 996 anymore uh, and this kind of feels like that and I like the way that it goes around a bend and the roundabout you can properly accelerate through it and I don't even I'm not even a very good driver I say a very good driver. I'm not a bad driver I'm not a racing driver I'm uh, describe myself as a safe driver I think um, but 
you know, I see, I wouldn't buy, and also it's really expensive. I know everyone will say, oh, well, you're buying a rally car for 35,000 pounds, 34 something. Whereas our Golf R cost kind of the same, well, you know, we're still paying for it. Uh, I don't actually own it outright yet. Uh, well, my wife doesn't own it outright yet because she's still paying for it. But um, I'm back in traffic now. So yeah, that was, that was nice. Um, so would I recommend someone else buying it? Well, if, you, if you're not bothered about the impracticality of it, and you live somewhere where there's lots of open roads and there's lots of winding roads, and those are the roads that you go on, you don't have to make a special effort to go on them, then I would say it's gonna be brilliant. And you've got that money, then it's brilliant. Um, would I have it in place of my 996? No. Because this is a very different thing, I guess. Everybody knows that. It's, a, it's four wheel drive. It's a rally type car. Although as analog as it is, or as it, as it feels, there's still that something about it that, that says that I'm always completely and utterly controlled. There's no uh, terror pageantry. The noise, although good, and it's coming through the speakers. So it's kind of fake because it's a, a three cylinder turbo. Uh, turbocharged engine so it's not going to make the same noise as a, as a 3.4 flat 6 but do I care? No, not really because it sounds great it's a great noise um, so yeah if you if you wanted a totally and utterly fun car to drive around these kind of roads and you weren't bothered about the practicality of it and but there's, there's got to be other cars that do it for less money and the, I guess the thing this has got going for it it's going to have great resale value in while that waiting list is still there and also it's bulletproof it's a Toyota you can't go wrong it's not going to be like my um, 996 where every time you get into it you think is something about to go wrong I mean I'm, I'm a lot more confident with it now because I've had it for two years and I use it every day kind of thing but this is kind of a properly properly every day and yet it's actually a rally car so so that's my alternative review of driving a Yaris GR which you know has been pretty clear as mud I don't really know I wouldn't I wouldn't buy it I like it I like the way it drives there's a Jaguar E-Type Series 1 that just went past I love those cars um, it, yeah, just the, 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 what they've done with the inside even, the, the way that it, it feels, pedals, the, the, the gear change. Gear change is really important to me, the way I, I drive a manual car. And the way the steering feels, the way when you throw it to the corners and bends and things like that, uh, it feels nice. Even if you just move, move the steering side to side, it feels great. Um, but is it worth all that fuss? I, it could be if, if you're going on a track, if you're going rallying, but if you're driving around the country lanes, you're never really gonna exploit it to that extreme, are you? So, I think it's one of those things that you have to say, I've owned one and I've driven one. And you'd go, oh yeah, everyone's raving about the uh, Yaris GR. Oh yeah, I've driven one. Oh, I could say that now. I've driven one. So that's my boring review of the Yaris GR that everyone has already reviewed, already given more in-depth views on it, and, oh, big bump. And, uh, and I've just given it a quick drive around a country lane in heavy traffic without fully exploiting, experiencing it or anything like that. But I am on a milk run. So uh, I want to pick up the milk, head back, hand the car back to my friend, and you'll see me uh, in the next couple of days on the next milk run in either the 996 or the 912. The 912 might be dead, but uh, after the last time I drove it, I drove it a bit too hard and it just felt quite rough when I got back. Um, 
I've not checked it or anything, so I'll give it, uh, I'll fire it up again in a couple of days and hopefully it'll all be good. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I'll give more updates on the merch because I need to talk to my sister and get her to help me out. I've done the text of hashtag the milk run, which will go on the sleeves of the long uh, sleeve top and across the back. And I've got some flat caps that my sister is going to sort out for me. And then I need to think about doing an e-commerce website. God, that's the boring bit, isn't it? Um, but hopefully see you at uh, Classics of the Clubhouse or out and about, hoping to do some kind of local car meet. Uh, we'll keep everybody posted on Instagram. And thank you for watching. See you next time.